What's up everybody, I'm Morteza Kordi and in this tutorial we are going to learn about Java Development Kit. The JDK allows us to create Java programs that can be executed and run by the Java Virtual Machine and Java Runtime Environment. The JDK is the full featured software development kit for Java. The JDK is also capable of compiling Java programs. Now let's learn about the JVM or Java Virtual Machine. The JVM is the Java platform component that executes the program. So in other words, the execution of the program is the responsibility of the JVM. The JRE or the Java Runtime Environment is a package of everything necessary to run a compiled Java program including the Java Virtual Machine. JRE cannot be used to create Java programs, it is only used to run Java programs. So in general, if you want to do some Java programming and create some Java applications, you need JDK. But if you want to run Java applications on your device, you need JRE. So now let's go ahead and download and install the JDK on our device. Okay, so now open your web browser and search for download JDK 8. And then here it appears the first link on this page, Java SC Development Kit 8. So SC stands for Standard Edition. I'm going to click on this link. And then you will be guided to this page. So first you will see the different versions of Java Development Kit for different platforms. So if you are using Linux, Mac OS, or Windows, you should choose the proper version. And by the way, make sure to identify the type of your operating system if you are using Windows. For example, if you have a 32-bit operating system, then you need to download the Windows x86. But if you have a 64-bit operating system, you need to download the Windows x64. So here I have a Mac OS X, so I'm gonna click on this DMG file on this link in order to download this file. But it says, sorry, you must accept the license agreement before downloading. So you need to check this checkbox that says accept the agreement and then you can go ahead and download the Java development kit. And by the way, if you do not know how to identify the type of your operating system if you're using Windows, then you can search online and just search for something like how to find out the 32-bit or 64-bit type of a Windows operating system and then you will find the answer. So I'm going to pause the video and after the downloading process is finished, we're going to continue installing this software on our computer. Okay, so now that the JDK is downloaded, I'm going to double click on it in order to install it. So if you're using Windows, you should have an exe file. So you just need to double click on it in order to open it. It might ask you for administrative permissions that you should allow the application to install on your computer. And because I'm using Mac, it is asking me to double click on this package. So then it's going to open this window for me. Now I'm going to click on continue. So it's going to take 587 megabytes of space on my computer. Now the software is being installed on my computer. So now it says that you can move the installer to the trash. I'm going to click on move to trash because I don't need the installer anymore. In the next tutorial, we're going to go ahead and learn about the Integrated Development Environment, or IDE. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hi there, in this video, we're going to go ahead and learn about Integrated Development Environment. IDE is a software environment used to write programs using tools like an editor and compiler. So now let's see the benefits of an IDE, why we need an IDE. IDE simplifies the process of compiling our code and we don't need to use the command line application in order to navigate to the project location and execute it. IDE allows us to click on a play button and see the results immediately. An IDE gives us the state-of-the-art debugging tools that make our life as a programmer. An IDE gives us the state-of-the-art debugging tools that make our life as a programmer fairly easy. We can simply find and eliminate the bugs using debugging tools. IDE also gives us the ability to manage our project easily without any frustrations. 
Now let's go ahead and download and install the IntelliJ IDEA on our computer. Open your web browser and search for IntelliJ IDEA download. And then you will see this link www.jetbrains.com slash idea slash download so just click on this link and now you should be guided to this page it says download IntelliJ IDEA we have the ultimate version and the community version the ultimate version is not free so we don't want to download it we want to use the community version that is enough for us so just click on this version community download so now it's gonna start the downloading process for us automatically if the downloading process does not start here you can just click on this direct link here so wait until the downloading process is finished and then we can continue installing this software on our computer and also another important note is that make sure that you download the IDE that is compatible with your operating system so if you are using Windows make sure that you download the version of this IDE that is compatible with Windows. So here you can see these tabs, Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. You can download the specific version that is compatible with your computer. So, okay, now that the IDE is downloaded, I'm gonna click on this DMG file. So if you're using Windows, it should be an exe file. You should just double click on it in order to start the installation process. So now it says that I should just drag this file into the applications folder and now the installation process is finished and here as you can see I already have IntelliJ IDEA in my computer so I'm gonna just click on replace and I'm gonna install the new version of this IDE later I will also show you how to update the IDE itself now I'm gonna just open my IntelliJ IDEA IDE in order to show you that this software is installed on my computer. So when I try to open this IDE, it says that this application is downloaded from the internet. Are you sure you want to open it? I'm just gonna click on open. Now here it is, the IntelliJ IDEA installed successfully on my computer. So if you want to update this IDE, you just need to click on configure and then click on check for updates and then it will check for IDE updates automatically and it will show you the new updates and you can update the IDE if you want. But for now, it might, for example, just tell us that you have the uh, latest version of this IDE and you don't have to install any other updates. So now it says you already have the latest version of IntelliJ IDEA and plugins installed. So that's good. And now we are ready to create some Kotlin applications. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and set up the IDE for developing Kotlin applications. Hi there, in this video, we're going to go ahead and set up the IDE for developing Kotlin applications. So let's get started. So now just open the IntelliJ IDEA IDE and let's click on create new project. So here it's going to load the templates for me. But here it should look something like this. You should have something like Java here and Kotlin. You can either choose Kotlin or Java. I'm going to choose Java. And you should select the Kotlin JVM. So if you choose Kotlin, you should also see the Kotlin JVM here. So check this checkbox, Kotlin JVM. And then first, let me tell you about the project SDK. Here you can see the path of the Java development kit that I have installed on my computer. So if you don't have this path set up here, make sure to click on new and then navigate to the path of the Java development kit in your computer and set the project SDK here. After that, after selecting the Kotlin JVM, now we have something called use library. So here it says Kotlin Java runtime. So if this value is not set up here for you, you can click on create because this IDE already comes with the Kotlin Java Runtime Library. So choose this option if this value is not set up here. Okay, and now we just need to click on Next. So here we should specify the project name, but notice as I'm typing the project name, take a look at this project location. So for example, I'm gonna type in here my first project. So notice that the project location is also changed to idea projects slash my first project 
So this name here is going to be the name of the folder of my project. So my project files will be stored inside a folder named as my first project. So for example, if I delete this name, then it's going to just put all the project files inside this path, inside the idea projects folder. And that's not good. Make sure to always specify a name for the folder that is going to store your project files. Otherwise, there will be no folder and your files will be disorganized. So I'm going to just copy the name of this project and then paste it here after this, after this slash. So sometimes the IDE won't put this name for you. So in that case, you need to do it manually. Hopefully that makes sense. Now let's click on finish. And now it says the directory does not exist. This means that there is no folder named my first project inside this idea projects. So it says that it will be created by the IntelliJ idea. I'm going to click on OK. You might not see this error here, by the way, but that's okay. So here is going to configure and set up the project for me. I should wait. So here, after configuring the project for us, now we are ready to work with our project. So here you should see the look of the project. On the left sidebar, you should see the project navigator. So if you don't have this project navigator here at the left side here, so you just need to click on the view at the top and then go to tool windows and click on project so if it is open it's gonna close it and if it is closed and if i do it again it's gonna open it here for me you should also use the shortcut so for me it is command one so if you're using windows it should be alt one we don't want to work with our project files in this video here I'm going to show you how to change the theme of your IDE, how to change the font of the codes. So at the top menu, if you are using Windows, you just need to click on File and then click on Settings. But if you're using Mac, you just need to click on IntelliJ IDEA at the top and then click on Preferences. Now it's going to open this window for you. So first of all, I want to change the theme of my IDE. So here you should see something like Appearance and Behavior. If you open it, you should see this one, appearance. If I click on it, here we can see the theme. I can change the light to dark hula, and then I can click on apply. So now the theme of the application is changed to dark hula, and I can change it back to light or to a high contrast, but I like the light, and now I just need to click on apply in order to see the changes. Okay, that's fine. Now I want to increase the font size. How can I do that? So here you can see the editor. If you open this editor by just clicking on this little triangle here, you should just click on the font here. And now you can change the font if you want. And also you can change the size of the font and the line spacing. After changing these values, you can just click on apply and see the changes. So the next important point that I want to talk about here is that just open this editor and then open this general you should see this one, auto import. I'll talk more about import later, but for now just know that it makes our life as a programmer more easier if we just enable this option in our IDE. So first of all, make sure that this one, show import pop-up is checked, this checkbox, and also the classes, static methods and fields, and also this one, add unambiguous imports on the fly. Make sure all of these checkboxes are checked. And now we have something else. It says insert imports on paste. So here you can either choose ask or you can say all. So whenever we paste some lines of code in our class or file, it will automatically add the classes. Sometimes you may want to be asked about the imports. So I want to set this one as ask so that I can see what are the classes or libraries are going to be added to the project whenever I paste a bunch of code to my file. So that's okay. Just click on okay. And now these changes are saved. In the next section, we are going to learn about the programming basics. I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial.